And I want to say a word about unemployment. It's not talked about enough. Real unemployment in this country, if you include those people who have given up looking for work, and the many who are working part-time, ain't 5 percent. It is 10 percent. And now let me tell you something that very few people talk about. And that is the crisis of youth unemployment in this country. A couple of months ago, I asked some economists to do a study for me. And I asked them to tell me what real youth unemployment and underemployment was for high school graduates, not dropouts, high school graduates between the ages of 17 and 20. And this is what they told me. For white kids, real unemployment, 33%. For Latino kids, real unemployment, 36%. For African American kids, real unemployment, 51%. In other words, we are turning our backs on an entire generation of young people who want to stand up on their own two feet, they want to earn some money, they want to get out of the house, they want to begin their lives as adults. And what we are saying to them is there are no jobs available for you. But let me tell you something else that we are saying to these young people. Today in America, we have more people in jail than any other country on earth. 2.2 million people in jail, disproportionately black and Latino. Now, it seems to me, when you have youth unemployment at 30, 40, or 50 percent, maybe, just maybe, it makes sense to invest in education and jobs rather than jail and incarceration. There is a promise. There is a promise. I don't make a whole lot of campaign promises. You got one here tonight. If elected president, the United States of America will not have more people in jail than any other country on earth. We're going to send our young people to jobs and school, not to jails. And when we talk about the economy in America today, and when we talk about why people are working such long hours, so many jobs, it has everything to do with the fact that wages in America are just too damn low. As all of you know, the federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. Now you can do the arithmetic as well as I can. You multiply seven and a quarter or eight dollars by 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, and what you end up with is not enough money to take care of a family. And that is why I believe that the minimum wage has got to be raised to a living wage, 15 bucks an hour. And when we talk about fair wages, I hope every man here will stand with the women and fight for pay equity for women workers. There is no rational economic reason why women are earning 79 cents on the dollar compared to men. It is simply sexism. It's got to end.